there's a scene there's a scene in in the there's a scene in the play uh, where <laughs> one of the actors on the stage breaks the fourth wall, runs out into the audience, uh, goes up to best looking guy you can see, and he says, uh, "What are you doing after the show?" <laughs> <laughs> well, when we did it in Minneapolis, when we did it in Minneapolis, the guy st- stood up and said. Get away from me, you f- okay. And, uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Things better not said. Um, Things better not said, yeah. So, um, well, let me show them a copy of the, the book, because you just have yeah. a collection of your uh, of your work out now, right? Yeah. And so just, here yeah. is the new, it's called Biramisa Portraits, Plays, and Perversions. And you've got six or seven plays in here, right? The Man with Straight Hair is in here. And yeah, the Man Daddy with Straight Violet, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Jello. And, um... Uh, I think the man with straight hair is one of my favorites because of that conflict that you have. You have this sort of Nelly queen uh, right. who's very much in love, and then you have the butch queen who keeps telling everybody else it, they're just roommates, they're just friends. It's not serious. Yeah. And is that does that come from something in your own life, or is that just um, a, a well, portrait it, you wanted to do? Of that that comes of me because uh, I I used to go around, you know, in a leather jacket. And, trying to act really, <laughs> excuse me, trying to act really, really butch, pretending I wasn't gay. And uh, and uh, and I felt that inside. I mean, uh, it, it was like back in those days, uh, you know, 40s, 50s, and 60s, I mean, uh, I had a lot of internalized homophobia, or what would actually be called would be self-hatred, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, and so when I wrote this play, it was to it was to show what that does to a person and the isolation it sets them up in because they can't face who they are. They have to pretend that I had... Well, that I had... They, I, where I had to pretend I was uh, something I'm, you know, I'm not... That's what I found very moving about it, you know, and and uh, and uh, the way that the lovers really are uh, uh, really on the point of breaking up, and the woman comes into the picture and everything else, and it really seems like this uh, this macho guy can't acknowledge what's going on, and then well, I won't give away the the ending of the play, but I just <laughs> found it very very touching. And of course, they were talking about Howard Johnson's. You worked at the Howard Johnson's in the Village for a while, didn't I you? I worked. Yes, I, I worked at. Uh I worked as a soda jerk. That's a term that isn't even used anymore. <laughs> uh, as a soda jerk in, in uh, Howard Johnson's uh, in the 50s. Um, there, I'm uh, uh, Walter Winchell. A lot of people don't even know who Walter Winchell is, but he at the time, he was probably the most powerful journalist in the world. And he would, he would come in and... Uh, in fact, I've written a story about this. Uh, he would come in and uh, and and order an ice cream cone, you know. And uh, one night we were about ready to close. It was about one o'clock in the morning. It, it was about a minute after one in the morning. So he sent in his flunky, and he said, "I'm going to get two ice cream cones." And the limousine was out in front, and I knew Walter Winchell was in it. And uh, I said, I'm sorry, sir, we're closed. <laughs> and he said, but it's for Walter Winchell. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, sir. It's we're you, George, always closed. pushing the limits. Yes. And then, <laughs> and then, and then uh, he said, uh, uh, he said, I'm going to speak to the manager. The manager was downstairs you know, working on the books. So I said, I'm the manager. You know? <laughs> so anyway, he, he finally went out in a huff. Uh-huh. And then two weeks later, <laughs> two weeks later, there was an item, I think it was in the Daily News, mm-hmm. uh, his column or, or the Daily Mirror, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. And it, it, in it, it said, uh, a, a bunch of mm-hmm. lewds mm-hmm. Uh, uh, hang out at Harriet Johnson's <laughs> in the village. <laughs> and for the next year, he kept putting little barbed comments, huh? comments. But of course, as a consequence, 
<laughs> you got a lot of business? Yeah. We got, all of a sudden, Howard Johnson's turned into a, a gay place, uh-huh. you know? Uh-huh. And people were in there all the time, and, you know, and it was... Yeah, it was so you uh, had a hand in that, too. You, I you've, had uh, a, you're like Johnny Appleseed. You've <laughs> sown a lot of seeds. <clears throat> well, I want to make sure we have time to hear some of your writing. I know you, you brought a piece today to perform for us. Yes, I did. And this is set in 1944? After, Correct, 1944. And you had been in the, well, the character, <clears throat> but you had been in, this, in the Navy and were discharged, right? I, and, I, was, I was discharged because I went up to the captain and told him I was gay. Ah, okay. And, uh, you know, and that's, you know, I ended up, uh, I ended up in St. Albans Hospital in the locked ward with a lot of murderers and rapists. But luckily, somehow, I ended up getting an honorable discharge. And here you are today. Well, let's hear your piece. Okay. (laughs) I tried to get my job back at the New Weston, but Grady, the chief bellhop, uh, informed me that he was going to fire me, but but I beat him to the punch by quitting. Uh, I'm sick and tired of your... Of hearing your excuses, Biramisa, you were always late for work, and you never shined your shoes. So I said to myself, what the heck are you doing in this crummy town in the first place, George? I packed my suitcase, went down to the Holland Tunnel, and stuck out my thumb. I wasn't sure where I was going, but, but I got ride after ride, <laughs> uh, uh, after ride, uh, ah, all the way to San Francisco. I was only a hundred miles from Santa Cruz, the sleepy small town where I was born, where the professor and mom had a summer home. I hitchhiked down Highway 1 past Devil Slide and the Redwoods in Santa Cruz Mountains. I was nervous as hell as I rang the doorbell of the white stucco bungalow that was trimmed in green. No response. So I knocked loudly on the door. Mom, I yelled, are you home? When there was no answer, I looked in the front window, but but the blinds were pulled down. Mom? Go away, mister. It's it's me, uh, your son, Georgie. If you don't go away, I'll call the police. It's Georgie, Mom. I, I came all the way from New York just to see you. Her voice trembled. Is, is that you, Georgie? Yeah, Mom, it's me. A key turned in the lock, and the door opened a crack. Is, is that really you? I tried to keep the anger out of my voice. How many times do you want me to tell you, for crime any sakes? She opened the door halfway. She was wearing a starched yellow apron with smiling black cats on it. Well, why are you like that? Like what, Mom? Where, where is your sailor suit? I'm out of the Navy. Did, did they kick you out? I was the only survivor of an aircraft carrier, I lied. <laughs> it, it got sunk uh, by the Nazis, so, so I got me an honorable discharge. She scratched the bridge of her nose. You came here to get money from me? Heck no, I didn't. I, I clenched my fist. Jesus, Mama, I just... Came to see you, and, and I want to see, I want to see my little sister Easter too. She played the oboe with the San Francisco Symphony on the boardwalk. Mom said proudly, "Your little sister is a genius. She has perfect pitch. She's an expert on the violin, the clarinet, the glockenspiel, and the piano."